Thanks very much, uh, Kelly. Important thing here, Gary Gensler, thanks very much for joining us. Making a few headlines here, uh, Mr. Gensler, you're saying that the under SEC is undertaking a broad review of stock market structure. Now, I know you've said in the past that you are somewhat unhappy with the payment for order flow regime. You've implied there's too much concentration, and you've also implied that investors may not necessarily be getting best execution. Can you demonstrate, or do you think you can demonstrate, that investors may not be getting best execution? best execution? And if so, what are you proposing to do about that? Well, Bob, first, uh, good to be with you. And technology changes our markets on, a, on an ever-increasing basis. So what I've really said to staff and my fellow commissioners is we should ensure that our rule sets are updated for 2020's technology. And what do we find in the 2020s is um, there's a provision that you and me, all of us are to get best execution when we enter a trade into a trading platform and, and the broker gets his best execution. And it doesn't mean better execution, best execution within the role. And uh, there's this thing called payment for order flow. And we've had some cases as recently as the end of last year where there's this inherent conflict where somebody paying for our trading, our order flow, is saying, well, I can give you a little better execution or a lot better execution depending how much I pay you for that order flow. So I think we need to take a close look at that. Not every country allows this payment order flow. Many uh, major markets around the globe don't. I think the key point you have been making is you'd like to see more trading in the lit markets on exchanges like here at the New York Stock Exchange. Is that the thrust of what you're trying to get at here? I think the thrust is a little broader than that. It's about ensuring that through transparency and competition that we as investors, the individuals, working families, get the, the, the best execution and the best out of their investment platforms and their brokers. So I think transparency and competition helps that. And it is, you know, most of what we do as retail uh, uh, if we put an order in, it's not going to uh, the, what you call the lit markets, New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ. It's going to some wholesaler buying that uh, order. Let me move on to the meme stops. We've been talking about them for the last several days. They've been making headlines. You said in your recent uh, congressional testimony that you've asked your staff for more information on exactly what happened with Reddit and GameStop and Robinhood a few months ago. And what, if any, regulatory or rule changes need to be cha changed at this point? Can you share with us your thoughts at this point? I know you said you've asked your staff, but what's your thoughts at this point? Have you come to any conclusions about what, if any, regulatory changes need to be made? Look, I'm only in the second month, and I know a few months from now you'll ask me again, uh, be, be back, and you'll say, well, you're in your fifth month. Look, I think that technology has led to greater access and it, it better user experiences. It's easier to trade within the market. But at the same time, we have to watch out for investors. And so these behavioral prompts that are being put on uh, our mobile ops, apps to trade, is that really the best thing? So uh, we're going to take a t close look at what's called gamification. All these little prompts and these, these encouragements to trade. Uh, and uh, how do we protect investors in, the, in this new regime? You know, Jim Cramer this morning, my colleague, was talking about the need for more education, perhaps, from the SEC. Obviously, we're concerned that all of this could blow up in people's faces, and people were going to start to wonder, what did people do, or what should we have been told to warn us about it? Does the SEC have any role in educating people about the problems that can happen when you get involved with stocks that are way, way beyond, or in price areas that are way, way beyond their fundamentals? What role does the SEC play in, in mitigating this or... or, or or helping people to understand what's going on. So, uh, Bob, we do have an investor education and investor focus. We've had that, uh, it's a, at the core of our mission. We also have a vibrant examination enforcement uh, regime, and, and we look out for investors in terms of making sure and looking for where people are trying to uh, uh, do fraud schemes or, or trying to do pumping up a stock. Uh, uh, in, in, in ways that are on the wrong side of the line. And it, that's easier to do when it's a very low price stock. Sometimes it's called penny stocks and the like. 
and and through through uh, uh, bad actors doing bad things. So we're going to do investor education, rigorous enforcement, but also look to see whether we should freshen up our rule set in this area. Chair Gensler, it's Kelly here, and I just want to get two quick questions in uh, before heading back to Bob. This is fascinating all throughout. So my first quick question is more of an observation that the business model of a lot of trading platforms is pay for order flow. If you take that away, it could mean there's no more free trading, which is currently underpinning the entire kind of Reddit Robinhood phenomenon, if you want to call it that, at a time when Robinhood's about to IPO. Do you have any response to that in terms of will that well, actually first, be in the best first, interest of the public? First, I would say this, Kelly, don't, don't, uh, I think that's a misperception. It's not free trading. Somebody is paying for your and my order flow. Secondly, they're getting our data. The data is very valuable. So it is zero commission, but not necessarily free. Number two, not every broker does it in the United States. And number three, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, it's banned. Most of Europe, you don't have it. So there are different business models, but uh, it, it's, not, it's not free. Understood. The other question that we're getting a lot from people these days is about naked short selling. It's illegal, but there's insistence that it's happening. Some would acknowledge maybe on a very small scale. Others insist it's a much larger scale. What can you tell us about its commonality in today's trading environment? Well, um, I think that we can bring greater transparency to short selling. And this is one that uh, Bob is going to say, well, you're only in your second month. I'm going to say uh, I've asked the staff to actually serve up recommendations that we can look at. Uh, we have authorities to bring greater transparency in the short selling and related uh, stock borrow area. And I look forward to putting something out to public comment. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.